Hello, welcome back folks. So if you watched the last episode, you'll have seen me show you the basics of studio and we made ourselves this little football pitch here. If you want your place to look the same as mine, I'll be putting a link down in the description where you can download the place files for each episode in this series as we go along. But moving on, as today is where things really begin, because in this episode, we're going to start learning the very first basics of scripting. As we've previously seen, you can make lots of things with just building. But if you want to make a more exciting game, you're going to need something called a script. Now, in case you're wondering what exactly a script is, it's just a way of writing instructions that can then be carried out by the computer. This is useful because then we can write instructions for things to happen while the game is running. Okay, so let's get scripting. But before we do, we're going to need one more important item to help us. Now, I've already used the Explorer and the Properties menus, but we're going to need one more. So let's head over to the View tab. I'm going to select Output. And when we do, this little window is going to pop up. Now, you sometimes see little messages from the system when you save the game here. So if I hit Control S, you'll see Episode 1 was saved to file. So you see things like this here, which aren't really that interesting. But what it is very useful for is allowing our script to communicate with us. What do I mean by that? Well, let's add in our first script. So head over to the Model tab. And over on the right here, you see the script, local script, and module script. We're not interested in these last two. So you can just add in a regular script. And when you do, you'll notice it already has some text inside it. So every script comes with a sort of template code, if you will, with the words print, and then a sort of bracket, quotation mark, and hello world. What's all this about? Well, it's an instruction or a command, or a bit of code, and I'll tell you what we can do. We can just run the game and see what happens. So select the drop down here, and we don't want to play it. We're just going to run, OK? So hit run, and when we do so, we should see down the output the message, hello world. So that's what print does. It takes a message, and it puts it down in the output for us. So it's whatever within these quotation marks. Notice how it's uh, purple as well. So we could type whatever message we wanted. We could put, um, hello, YouTube, for example. And if we ran that, now we'd see hello, YouTube down the output. Now it does need to be within the quotation marks. So if we got rid of them, it would change from purple to black, which is telling us something's not quite right already. And we've got a red underline. So there's two signs that we could be going wrong. And if we try to run it now, we would actually see some red text appear. So this is an error, and it tells us that there's something wrong with our script. Now, this is why the output is really useful, because if you ever make a mistake, you will see it here, because it's saying that's not valid code, and it's not going to run. So we'll stop the game, head back to our script. Now, as well as just text, you can also put numbers in the print. So you can put 10, and you don't need the double quotes when you're using numbers. So they can just work on their own. And we can print out the number 10. And we can also do calculations here. So I could say 10 plus 25. And I should see 35 down the output when I run it. Yeah, 35. And I could do um, all kinds of calculations if I wanted. I could do 10 times 25 divided by 1.5. And then I would see... That's 166.66 recurring by the looks of it. So I can do all sorts of things with the print command, but we're not going to worry too much with that for now. OK, so we'll delete that. And instead, I want to make some changes to the game world now. So let's say our ball over here. Now, currently it's set to unanchored so we can drag it around and we can see it's got all these properties. And if we wanted to change them, we could do so just in the edit menu here. But if we want it to happen while the game is running, well, we need to do it from a script. Now, we can't just type something like make ball invisible. Clearly, that's not going to work. It doesn't know what make means. It doesn't know what any of this means, really. So we need a, a way to tell the computer where to find ball, first of all. Now, we'll notice that ball is with inside the workspace. So if I hit this little arrow to collapse everything, you can see everything within workspace hidden. So we know everything is inside of workspace. Now, thankfully, workspace is actually 
what's called a variable, a global variable, and so we can just access it. So if I type in workspace, you'll see it sort of highlights in blue. You might be able to notice that. And then we can access things inside of it by using the dot, a full stop or a period. So I press dot, and then I can access the index of everything inside workspace. So I get this little auto suggestion prompt box and I can select anything from within that, but I can just type ball as well. Now it's really important when you type in these out, it is case sensitive. So if I try to type in ball, all in capitals like that, that is not the same as ball. Ball in all capitals doesn't exist. Only ball like that exists because that's how I've spelt it over in my explorer. Okay, so let's now change one of its properties. How about we make it invisible, okay? So that would be the transparency property. So if I was just doing it within Studio, I could change that to one and it would be invisible. So let's do it from our script now. Ball, and then we'll index that. So use the dot and then we'll type transparency. We can press enter and it will auto complete for us. And then we need to set that equal to one. So we use the equals symbol and then we'll type one. So if we just take a quick look again, we'll notice the ball is currently fully visible, but when we run the game, so go to test and run again, we'll notice the ball is invisible. It's still there, but it's just set the transparency to one and we stop the game. Well, it resets. So there we go. Our first script affecting the game. Now we could make multiple changes if we wanted. We could even set it to one and then we could set it to zero again. How about we do that? Because scripts run one line and then the other. So it will always do what's on top first and then the second line. Now, if we try to run this, we'll notice, oh, nothing's changed. Transparency is still zero. I wanted it to flash between them both. Well, the reason for this is because script runs so quickly that it's doing both of these lines just within a millisecond. If we want more of a delay, what we can use is the wait command, okay? So we'll add another line in here. We'll put type in wait, and we want an opening bracket and a closed bracket like that. And then we can put a number in there. So I'm gonna put one, which means we want to wait for one second before going to the next line. Okay, so now let's run the game. We'll watch this. It should make it invisible, wait one second, and then appear again. And if we wanted, we could repeat this yet again. So we could add another wait, one, and then we could set it to fully transparent again. I'm copying and pasting these lines to make it a bit easier. We could copy them both again, and then we could set it to fully opaque again. We could run that. And then it's gonna be invisible, invisible, visible. And there we go, a little flash. Now, how about we change a, another property now? How about we add in a wall? We're gonna give our team a bit of an advantage here. We're gonna cheat really. So we're gonna add in a wall over here. This is our goal. I'm gonna fill in the wall so the opposition team can't score, okay? And instead of putting a script inside workspace, we're gonna put a script inside of this part now. So we're gonna click that little plus and we're gonna add in a script inside of it. Now, instead of saying workspace dot whatever, we can access this from a different way. So we can say from the script instead. Script is another global keyword we can use. So script dot, we'll get the index of the script and then we can access a property called the parent. Now the parent or attribute, I should say, um, is whatever it's inside of. So the script is inside of part. So the part is its parent. And the parent of this part, well, that's workspace. So we're going the other way up. We're going up the tree now, whereas before we were going down the tree, if that makes sense. So now we've got the parent, which is part, then we can access the properties of it. And we could set the properties, say, let's change the material. So the material, Currently it's set to brick and we can set this to, I don't know, let's look for a good property. We could change it to 
foil, for example. So I can't just write foil because remember it's text. So I need to do it within those double quotes again, like that, and it'll turn purple. So now when I run the game, we should hopefully see the wall has changed. It's now foil. And you can also see that ball was flashing at the same time. So we can have multiple scripts doing different things in our game and they're all doing exactly as we told them to. Now, if any of these things haven't worked for you, it's possible you've got a typo. So for example, in here, if I hadn't spelt this right, then I should be seeing an error down the output when it gets to that line. So there you go, Ooh, line seven, transparent is not a valid member of part. Okay, because I'd have spelt it wrong. So we could change that back. And then here, I could have an error if I hadn't put it in the double quotes. So these are the things you've got to be, watch out for and make sure you're keeping an eye on your output. Now, I don't want to overwhelm you too much at this stage. So we're probably going to leave it there for this episode. Hopefully that's got you familiar with the idea of changing the game's properties via a script rather than just via the properties window. In the next episode, we're going to look at how we can introduce some logic to make our games and our scripts a little bit more interesting. But until then, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. See you later.